עכשיו? When we thought, thought about that, we thought this, this could be a dangerous path because it can cost a lot of money for litigation. And also, if, unless the litigation, can, even if you win, you can need to spend a fairly good portion yeah. of that. What? Someone here? The lawyer. The lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't mind quoting him, but I far think it's better for you to hear him. <laughs> we, uh, in order to, to, to make the proper decision here, there had to be due diligence. And due diligence is a very specific term going after the legal aspect as well as others. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sanjay Curia, the senior partner of Becker and Associates in Fort Myers. Thanks. Let me finish the introduction for you and then we'll do it. Okay, so we, we, uh, we created a special committee to go after this. Chairman of the committee is Dave Hiller. Many of the people involved in Lakes are also on the committee. And they did a number of things. We engaged the services of a law firm, Becker & Associates, and their senior partner who is also heavy in construction law as well as use the services of an engineering company, Hans and & Associates. And with us now is that senior partner. And I, I'm pleased, uh, Sanjay, tell us your timing. Sure. Uh, uh, once again, Sanjay Curry with Dr. Polykoff. Uh, as John mentioned, we uh, had retained the services of Hans Wilson and Associates. They had been previously involved uh, in investigating and doing They did a brief, brief survey previously of the lakes uh, in phases one and two. We asked them to do a more thorough investigation on phase three uh, and walk the phase. Is that a mean issue? Chuck, Chuck, give me a mic. Ask them, Barry. Yeah. Is, is, is Mike okay? I'll get a gift from Chuck. Um, so, yeah, we retain, uh, the association actually retained, but we work with the uh, Hans Wilson Associates Engineering Group. They do this kind of work. They went and evaluated all of the, the various lakes or in, in phase three. Uh, they came up with kind of what the issues were. Uh, the primary issue that we were looking at is, you know, are there, uh, you know, what's the, what is the, the, uh, the lake bank situation? Are there defects with that? Uh, and one of the focuses is, was there original construction or design defects with these lakes and the way the banks are, work, are, are exist and they were constructed? Uh, and that's for purposes of whether or not there was claims to be made against Taylor Morrison because they had to fit within that certain, these are design and or construction defects, not maintenance issues. If there are maintenance issues, those have been released in the prior litigation uh, and so those were not being pursued. Uh, and so, you know, to cut the long story short, Hans Wilson went out, they did the investigation, we had several discussions, they came back, uh, and we talked about it, and ultimately they issued a re report that said that the issues that you have with your lake banks are not the result of uh, construction or design defects in the original construction. And so, based on that, uh, it was my recommendation to the board, you don't have the engineering to pursue Taylor Morrison, and at this point, based on the engineering, you have other issues that, you know, uh, there have been some recommendations that these things need to be addressed and moving forward in the, in the report with uh, repairs and, and kind of a trial with one of the lakes to see how things can be addressed for those, but those are maintenance really issues, not uh, construction or design uh, issues with, with lakes. So uh, with regard to phase three, that was our, our conclusion uh, and our direction to the board was, there's not at this point an intent to pursue uh, with regard to Taylor Morrison on those things. So, John, I don't know if you want me to get into anything else on any of that, but that was the, the long sum, the short term here. Well, I, I think you, you, you certainly touched on it, but the, the idea was, where was the opportunity if we were gonna get any money out of Taylor Morrison? And because of the, of the agreement that was made when we made the settlement two years ago, we were, it, the only way we could get a settlement is if we could find engineering and design defects. So any houses built after the fact, any runoff after the fact, doesn't count. I think you heard that from Dave Hiller when he spoke to us in the last board meeting. So the, the uh, from, from uh, Sanjay's analysis, we would be foolish to pursue this. It would cost us money and we'd get nothing for it. Yeah, I think that that's, yeah, well, you don't have, 
any sort of construction case, you have to have the right engineering for it. And it wasn't it wasn't even close, in my opinion, about what was told me by Hans Wilson and ultimately what they put in, in writing. Yeah, the lake depths are actually more than was specified, which is a good thing. And the lake bank slope had not changed substantially. The erosion had occurred many times from when you build a house, it can cause erosion, and also particularly yeah. And then the catfish. We'll talk about that in the lake. Do we want to get into any other stuff? Or? Not unless you have qu any questions about, uh, from Sanjay about this this uh, recommendation. Yes, ma'am. Um, did we miss opportunities to set up the requirements for engineering review back when the development was starting? When you say did we miss opportunities, who is we? Whoever, the Taylor Morrison and the engineering people. So uh, my. I was not involved in the prior litigation. I understand what was happening in place. It is my understanding that Taylor Morrison and the prior engineers that did take the position that they had constructed all of it properly and done what they were required to do under under the district. So, you know, that that's always a fight. Uh, usually, when you're arguing that on this side of it, it's already been long constructed, and there are ways to forensically look at it and say you might say it was done right, but it wasn't. And that was the purpose of having Hans Wilson look at it was. Is what they're telling us accurate, or you know, is there something else we, sh we should have done, or, or they should have done? And they couldn't definitively say they should have built this some other way, or it was done wrong. It wasn't. The, these lakes, which are technically retention ponds, were constructed via permit issued in 2012 by Morrison and done by their subs, subs that built them. So we, we did we ch check against those specs. We had our engineers check against those original specs. And only if they varied significantly due to engineering did we have a possible case. And we thought this, we couldn't find it. What about the fact that we didn't have the area that put in until, what, 1800? That, that's really, that's not part of this, it, that does not affect the engineering or design of the lake. That, that, that's, that's lake water quality. The, the, only, the only thing that was excluded from your prior release was construction or design issues with the lakes, everything else. Uh, and once again, I wasn't involved in the litigation, so I, you know, I don't know what the discussions were, but there was a carve out to protect, hey, if we discover that design and construction issues, you could pursue those. But I'll, once again, you need the engineering to get there. Yeah, it just seems like if it's that significant a problem, what was it, 500 grand for us? I'm sorry, what? Was it 500,000 for us to put in those aerators? Or am I off? I don't remember if that title, but it, those are two totally different things. But what I'm saying is, those are legitimate questions, I think, about design. If they didn't predict that that was going to be a problem. I'm sorry, but aerators are not a are not part of the design of the lake. Okay. Thank you very much, Sanjay. Okay. Yeah, appreciate well, can time. I just, I'm sorry, <coughs> just because, I, why do I do that? Oh, I don't know why. I, I apologize. <laughs> don't call me. This. Okay, I won't. Um, <laughs> you can go I, just, I heard twice him say, do you want me to get into the other stuff? Is there oh, other stuff there, that there, we need to know about? Well, I would say there, there are maintenance issues that have been identified, but once again, that's, you would have maintenance issues whether there was a report done or not done. So that's why that, that's been, the board has the report or, and they can deal with that in, in due course. I'm sure they, they will do that. But okay. my, my focus was not on maintenance issues. It was, is there a thing or not? Okay, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. The, the next phase of this is, two, is twofold. One is to take this full report to the Lakes Committee for their planning and also to post it on the sample so that everyone can see. Right. And it includes uh, what are the main, the main sources of, of uh, erosion and so forth. For example, many of the lakes are, are built east-west and with that motivation for the way our winds are, you'll have more erosion on the, on the eastern bank. So we gotta look at those. One of the biggest things we have and it's hurting us is a thing called a placostomus, which is the armored catfish. 
but they burrow into the, into the edges and, and cause it rust. Another problem we have is mowers are mowing too close to the, to the shoreline and making ruts. So we've got to look at it. All that's going to come up in late, so I'm going to get the head of it. I appreciate it very much. It's all good. Thank you, Professor John. Okay. Yes. Sir. Yeah, I have a question. Um, you said that uh, engineers came out and checked out the legs and they said there was no issue with uh, design or the original design of the original design construction. Yeah. Uh, now, we, could we get a copy of that? Um, sure, it can be posted. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. That's my question. And since we started this with a motion to have this analysis done, do we require a motion to close out and accept the recommendations? I think it's reasonable. Would you like to make that motion? I, I, I'd like to read the report first. Um, do we have much time? Can we add it to the June Really, meeting? it's a long report. Okay. It, 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 it's quite conclusive, and after reading it, you will not change your mind. <laughs> I just think in terms of due diligence, I don't mind. I lead a boring life. I don't mind reading it. Oh, you, you don't have it. Yeah. If you want to wait till the June first meeting, no, if, we I mean, if if the board wants to go ahead, I, I just think we just need to close the loop on the original action to start the ad hoc committee. So we need to close the ad hoc committee. I think it would be a good idea to forward the report to the board so that we can read it before we vote. Fine. Yeah. I, I don't think it's going to change. It just simply. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It'll be done. Thank you. John, I'd just like to make one point is that this is the way the process should work. Right. And thanks to the Lakes Committee and Sanjay for your work on this because this is the way due diligence needs to be done on issues like this. And we got the answer we were looking for and now we can make an informed decision. So again, thank you to the committee for their hard work, Sanjay, et cetera. Now we have what we need to make a decision. I may be excusing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome to stay in your life, or you can go home. Well, I think you're going to walk me off the clock, so I. Wait. 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 It's not you. Bill of old limits. That was. Uh, okay, now I guess the next thing is, is your board president gets to talk. And I got a few things to say. You know, we've, we've been through a lot in the last year and you know obviously hurricane being the biggest we had a lot of changes we had changes to staff we've had changes to management companies and what i want to say now is i'm proud of where we're going i'm proud of our staff and our committees we have a gym that listens to our residents and spends extra time beyond the schedule to make it a better place we have outstanding maintenance director, far more qualified than some of the past, and staff to address our problems as if they were their own. Our compliance director has helped ARC to process a huge volume of needs due to hurricane air EM repairs and roof replacements. And he is diligently working with residents to clean up the appearance of our homes and yards. Our receptionist smiles at people. <laughs> She's nice and makes people feel well. I believe it, that's a big change. <laughs> <laughs> Our lifestyle director, who, who uh, started out and was so pleasant, we moved her into lifestyle. She's making this place more fun. She joins us for, for coffee and conversation. She joins in things. And so it's just a, a, a happier place. And then, and then Yamali, you know, she's in the background, but she's provided a continuity between three. You know, three different management, management groups and help us support through this all these changes. So anyway, the, the big change, and I think the thing that's really important, is that residents are more involved. And, and primarily through our committees. Our committees are stronger today. Landscape Committee is now holding our vendors accountable and meeting with them regularly. They're coming up with goals and measurements to make sure they do the job. They've created an RFP of the 619 homes that are served, full loan support. And believe me, and by the way, we've already had 11 companies willing to respond to that. It's a pretty tough RFP. In the past, the, the uh, 
our contract firm had no no way to measure, no penalties in case they didn't do the job right. The next time around, we're going to hold them much tighter because of the work they've done. Okay. Communications, uh, our ad hoc committee, which you just heard from, ad hoc litigation committee, they've been working for months on this, and Dave Hiller has done an outstanding job in making sure that we got every I across every T to get this done and with the help of Sanjay. And Hans Wilson Associates, particularly uh, our communications people are, are bringing life, life live Sandoval up to date. Kindly communications through Sandoval, Facebook, front rest, email blasts, live Sandoval and Town Square. ARC is processing an unprecedented number of requests and working extra Saturdays to get us back in shape every day. Lakes have taken on the initial task of monitoring and coordinating with our lake management vendor while developing a plan for erosion management, which we're going to work even more on up the They'll be evaluating our current vendor and see if maybe we can benefit from a change there. Socials, keeping our spirits up and nice parties and things to do and thinking more about games and, and things for all ages of our, of our uh, population. Finance and our treasurer present our financial position in a clearly understandable way better than before and the committee is stronger than ever and ready for the upcoming budget process. Risk management is holding our insurance providers to task and making sure the future contracts that we have have favorable conditions in them that helps that make sure we can those needs. That's my report. Here's a report, Bill Simonelli. Do you need us to get out of here? Uh, yeah, I think it would be helpful. Okay, we'll just go. It's the um, actual break. Suspense part of the program. Yeah. It worked before. <laughs> okay. All right. So, what we're going to talk about during the treasury report is we're going to cover two things. We're going to go through the normal monthly report of the financials and talk about some of the longer term trends. The second item we're going to do is we're going to do a deep dive into the uh, hurricane assessment, hurricane Ian assessment, the numbers behind it, and the proposal that will be considered by the board. Do, you need a, do we need a mic in front of him? Okay. So. As of Tuesday, our reserve funds had a balance of uh, $3.5 million, split between the Fifth Thirds account and our Pacific Premier Bank uh, account, which is used to pay the invoices against reserve projects. The uh, PPB balance was uh, $204,000 as of Tuesday, and the Fifth Third balance was $3.243 million, called $3.3 million. Um, as of uh, the 24th, our market yield is ticked up from 303% to 3.11%. That's reflecting as treasury bonds mature and get rolled, or, rolled into the higher interest rates. So eventually, hopefully, we don't want to see inflation go nuts, but hopefully we'll see this uh, stabilize at around 4%. That'll be our earning rate by the end of this year. 
Hurricane Ian, um, I won't take the thunder away from Chuck. A lot of the uh, restoration efforts are still underway. Um, and uh, I'm going at least, and, and for the better part of this year, we'll still be doing a lot of work on those. Uh, we will be presenting a proposal that will be, uh, the board will consider and vote on next Thursday, June 1st, so that uh, we'll talk about that more. And I want to spend a few minutes talking about the SBA loan. Uh, we were looking at getting a loan from the Small Business Administration under the disaster program that they had established after Hurricane Ian. We put in an application on January 11th for the loan. On April 11th, after submitting extensive documentation and on-site review of the damage assessment that uh, the SBA, SBA did along with the, the associate staff, uh, we received a loan offer of $811,000. It was for $811,000 at 1.875% with a 15-year payback. They also, with the loan offer, sent us 11 documents of various terms and conditions. We first uh, asked the Risk Management Committee to take a look at that, those documents. They identified a few flag items and we then engaged our legal counsel to look at those uh, documents. In doing the review of that, we came across a couple different issues that based on the way the SBA has reacted to our discussion about those, my recommendation to the board is that we do not accept the loan. The loan was going to be providing us a cash flow bridge. Uh, when you look at the deferred payment schedule associated with the uh, loan, the 1.875% interest rate was really 2.6%. So we are at best going to make 0.4, difference on money for about six to nine months until we got fully trued up with the assessment. The other thing is that the SBA required us to significantly increase our insurance coverage this year, which would have had a significant impact on the budget for this year. The other thing is they asked us to do a community-wide majority vote for the assessment to pay back the loan, so, which was not a practical thing to do with the community at this point, given the amount of time they gave us to do the vote. So based on all the conditions, my recommendation has been not to accept the loan, and that's a big part of consideration on June 1st. Going into the budget, I spoke with our auditor this week. Uh, we expect to have our audit package by middle of next week. We will then do a review of that, and once that audit and income tax forms are uh, reviewed and approved, they will be posted for everybody to review on Live Sandoval and on Town Square. Uh, based on my conversation with the auditor today, uh, everything is pretty much in shape except for cleaning up a few issues relative to the transfer of bookkeeping from First Services to Associate last year. Once those are resolved, we'll have the whole package to start reviewing next week. Our operating budget is on track. Uh, we'll go into more detail on that in a minute. Uh, using this meeting to start uh, flagging that our reserve contributions for new house sales is a right flag and is going to have an impact on our future reserve budget and how we look at budgeting into 24 and beyond. Long-term delinquencies, I think, are still showing a positive downward trend. I think Associate has been doing good with trying to keep up with the delinquency collections and we're starting to see bankruptcies being resolved and other than, and we'll show you, other than a spike occurring, which occurs the month after the payments are due, we're pretty much on still a downward trend. The Finance Committee is looking, we're taking some forward looking views. Uh, we have one gentleman in particular who's uh, spending a lot of time looking at different banking strategies that we can employ to disperse our funds so that we don't have any one account higher than $250,000 so we don't have any uh, liability relative to uh, bank liquidations if that ever happen down the road. Year-to-date financials. One of the things that I've done differently for this month is that in the past I've only reported income as a single line item. Our income has actually got two components, well three components to it. One major component to it is the 
month is the quarterly assessments that we pay for the community and for our landscape work. And then the second sort of smaller portion of that is when we collect the $5 charges for events, when we collect penalties from, um, uh, from uh, people that have uh, violated the rules or from uh, when we broke our, when we get a fine for someone that's uh, done gate damage. That all goes into what we call operating income. Reserve assessments primarily funded by the transfer or sale of houses within the community. On the operating income side, we are ahead about 60 grand and um, what's primarily driving that, I think this is sort of positive to what John said earlier, is that user fees and collections are ahead of year-to-date budget projections. And I think especially user fees because we're seeing a lot more activity going on in the community that the social committee is driving. The year-to-date variance um, on expenses is coming from contingencies, which means we haven't spent any money or allocated any money through the contingencies budget yet, landscaping and utilities, and we'll talk about those two in a minute. On the reserve contributions, year-to-date sales, uh, house sales are well below forecasted. When we did the budget last year, we planned for an 18% decrease in sales volume from 22 to 23. That volume this year right now is half of that. So we're looking, so we're projecting that our assessment income from house sales primarily is going to be half of what we had budgeted for this year. And as this, and the finance committee is already going to start looking at that in the June timeframe as we start forward looking view for next year's budget. Uh, based on uh, spot checking the main invoices, landscaping utilities are now starting to approach their budget run. I think there was some timing issues with some of the invoices, but I went in and check the main invoices and they are within a couple grand of what we have for monthly projections. So I'm assuming that with seasonal variations, those will level out and we'll see the variance basically zero out over time. The neighborhood landscape positive variance is still due to not having all the <coughs> invoices in correctly from DTE for their land, for their <coughs> irrigation maintenance work. Once that's done, I expect that we'll see that number, that variance zero out pretty close. And then repair and maintenance, we corrected the bookkeeping error that we flagged in the April report, and we're now seeing that repair and maintenance is, is um, as a positive variance, which means that we're on track with that budget so far. Year end financials, the other expenses. Um, the one outlier here is that we've had Crawford do a lot of irrigation repair work over the first few months of the year. That irrigation repair work has been work that we've allocated to the hurricane in assessment because that was repairing irrigation uh, systems damage from the hurricane. So they've not been using that labor to do regular maintenance on the irrigation system. So that's why we're still ahead of the game on that one irrigation line. Our operating balance sheet is uh, still showing um, is still pretty stable, uh, no, no red flags there. And our reserve balance sheet is showing a downward trend, which reflects a significant outflow of cash for a reserve account to pay for all the hurricane and repair work that we've been doing this year. Delinquencies, here again, another eye chart. Um, so the, the key thing is that the delinquencies, we, uh, our delinquencies total 139,000 for the month of April. That is a, we went from 558 to $72,000 on the 30 day delinquencies, which is a pretty normal spike the first 30 to 45 days after payments are due. On the positive note, the uh, plus uh, third, the plus 120 days went from 67 down to 48,000, and of the 48,000, 31,000 is still concentrated in two or three accounts. So uh, I think they're still working through that, and we're trying to clean this up as best we can. 
Last month, we started presenting uh, capital spend uh, over the year. Uh, so we've got capital spend through May of 635000 call it $636,000. A majority of it is allocated to spend associated with the Hurricane Ian uh, repair. Okay. Now we're going to shift gears and talk about the assessment. So the assessment has been an ongoing discussion with the board and the community because very early on after the storm we identified that this was, we saw the significant amount of damage that the community experienced and the amount of effort it took just to get the debris cleaned up, the down trees, the bushes, so we could transverse the roads, use the, use the esplanade, get the pool back in shape. So that was, we all saw that there was a lot of work that had to be done and I think over the last six, seven months, the associate team has been doing a lot of hard work associated with that. With that, unfortunately, it's, it's, come, it's now come to the point where I think we're, we're reaching, you know, we sort, of, we sort of have a good handle on just about all the expenses. We'll talk about contingencies in a minute. But we felt that this was a good time to put a stake in the ground and say, this is how much Hurricane Ian cost the community. And now have a discussion with the community about what the assessment should be to pay the bills for the repair work. This detail that I'm presenting to you is available to every resident in uh, Live Sandoval, and I think it got put on Town Square, if not, I'm not sure it's there also. There's two documents. There's one document which contains all the summaries by completed, in progress, and pending. And then there's a detailed worksheet behind that that has a list of every line item, the vendor that we paid for it, and what the status of the project was. So a majority of the work has been completed. In progress, we still have about $640,000 worth of work, which is primarily in the getting the fences and getting the lake three, lake two erosion project completed. Then there's landscape work to associated with uh, cleaning up on lake two. And then pending, we have a project manager that is helping us oversee the uh, efforts here. We have additional tree removals. Uh, sinkhole has uh, showed up in uh, Blanket, Greendale Street. So we have to deal with that. Uh, we're replacing the maintenance shed. Right now, there used to be a maintenance shed over behind the pool. That has to be replaced. That requires a new pad, new electrical conduit, and uh, having the installation put in. And then last, the tennis courts and need new lights, and the nets in, this, in the sports courts need to be replaced. We're still working on, or Chuck is still working on getting some quotes for the lights but we have at least one set of quotes that we're working with right now that is, in the worst case, will be what we'll have to spend to get the lights done and get the electrical work done for this. So when you add that all up, the amount of work that we've done for Hurricane Ian comes to $1.6 million. We, when we went through this with the Finance Committee, we thought that it was prudent to assign a contingency because as we go through the rainy season, we believe that other issues with the storm sewer system and other parts of the community will start to uh, manifest themselves. So we wanted to have some money held back so that we could handle those issues as they came up. Those, quite frankly, it's, it's those in the thing is we don't know what we don't know what's going to break yet or will is broken as a result of Hurricane Ian but we felt a 10% contingency was a reasonable reserve to have in place in case we found something. Now, if we don't spend that all contingency, my recommendation, this would be up, this would be my recommendation that has to be discussed with the finance committee and the board, is that we would take any excess funds and use that for new plantings that have to be replaced down the road. But, that we won't know until we get six, seven months down the road, at least get through this season. Great. Okay. 
So you should have brought the car. <laughs> okay. So the insurance claim payment, we have currently received $211,000 in insurance. Uh, and we are anticipating hopefully getting another $50,000. Uh, based on the ongoing work of the Risk Management Committee. I think what's important to understand about the insurance claim is that a significant amount of the work that we did to clean up after Hurricane Ian is not covered by hurricane, is not covered by insurance. We do, we have a, a deductible of 167, 165,000, if I'm not mistaken. That goes into the insurance calculation. Plus a uh, significant amount of the fence work is not covered by insurance. So when you, you know, so we can always go back and look at your new insurance policies for going for down the road, but we have to remember policies that are in effect were essentially decided upon in October of 21. So we have to work with what those were, and the committee is trying to do the best it can. And I think to the uh, not not to speak for uh, Todd here, but I think we've got resident volunteers that are doing the work of adjusters. So if we had an adjuster in here, I'd have to put in 10% of an expense for that right now for a payment to them. Even if, so I think we have we have a committee that's willing to try to do the best they can to get more money for the committee. So when it's all said and done, it nets out to $1.5 million. Simple division by uh, the amount 14, 1,425 doors in the community. It comes down to $1,058 per door. So the proposal is, is that we will make a one-time assessment to the community to replace the money, because we've basically been using the reserve funds to write the checks, to pay the invoices for the repair work right now. Uh, this is not a special assessment. We have authority under our own charter and under the uh, Florida Legislature Emergency Powers for Homeowner Association for a declared emergency to be able to make an assessment to pay for repairs. And what we are proposing is that the assessment will be $1,058 to be, to be due on October 1st for the homeowner of record on October 1st of this year. We are also looking at uh, offering an option of if the homeowner prefers to pay over time, uh, splitting it up into five quarterly payments that will coincide with the quarterly assessment payments. And those, those payments would be $225. Those payments do include a 3% cost of money uh, calculation built into them because that we're, we're trying to make up for the money that we would, the income we would get if that money was in our investment accounts right today. As I mentioned, this will be, these payments will coincide with our regularly due dates. If you elect to take the quarterly payments and you sell or transfer your house before the uh, payments are completed, you will have to true up and pay the remaining portion of the assessment before the uh, association can approve the sale. So the standard operating procedure there. Another key thing is that the assessment will be governed by current standard of delinquency policies and procedures. So if you don't pay, <coughs> we'll treat it as any other normal delinquency and we'll be tracking it as a delinquency to the community. Logistics. I met with the associate last week to start working through the logistics of the process for the assessment. The first thing we will do is send out a letter to every um, owner for every piece of for every property. Because I believe some owners have multiple properties here, and the letter will contain the information about the assessment and will be written in a way that if you have a loss adjustment rider with your insurance policy, you should be able to use this letter as, a, as part of your documentation for your claim to your insurance carrier. As we get closer to the payment time, 
We will be sending out further correspondence to the community about the receipt of coupon books, because we're going to use coupon books as a way to separately track the inflows for the payments and for the quarterly payments that people will have to split up their payments. And we're targeting getting the communications out in the late August, the Labor Day timeframe, so people have 30 days to prepare before the first payment, which we do October 1st. And that's the proposal. a notice and at the, at the special board meeting on the 1st of June we will, we will make a firm board decision on that assessment. It has a very high probability of passing. <laughs> Surfside's property line has been completed. The vendor was approved after we did a quality control check of the work that they did. Uh, they received a, or they are receiving a, a payment to uh, fund their materials, and that's what we're waiting on right now. Uh, we're waiting for the materials to, to come in. At the same time, we're kind of happy that the, the, the erosion project is over with because the same Calypso Park line is where the fence company is going to store their materials. So timing-wise, it kind of worked out real well for us. When they get on property with materials, the first thing they will take care of is the tennis courts, and then they'll start, uh, they'll start on the hardest part they can, that's bridal. Um, the most damage has been on the bridal side. So bridal, bridal lane, nice. yeah, on, on the, re the continued up on the rest of the surf side on the, the eastern boundary, and then uh, on to the Cape Royal side after that. Also, Somerville has some fence that also has been damaged. Uh, I'm glad to finally announce that uh, LCEC has finally put those three light poles back up that have been laying there for months now. Uh, so we have all of our light, uh, light stanchions are back up again on the street lights. Uh, as you may have seen the uh, communication, the gates are no longer going to be open during rush hour. They've been closed effective uh, yesterday, and they will stay closed uh, and as for, for security issues that we've been having. So uh, I ask everyone to be diligent and patient as those gates slowly open uh, so we don't uh, incur any damage. Uh, I don't want to take too much away from Dave, but we did kick off the residential bulk landscaping RFP, and you've heard that we've got 11 companies that are very interested in, in bidding uh, for this process. We're kicking off that process in earnest uh, this week, and uh, it's a, a bit of a process. It's gonna take a, a month or so, a couple of months to kind of get everything up and running, get the intelligence that we need, and the committee is doing an awesome job raising your hands to uh, you know do evaluations of the vendors current customers uh, to make sure that the references check out so I mean you, uh, you guys got a great we've got a great landscaping committee here I know I know Lynn's back and forth but uh, uh, I, I can't I can't tell you how much help they've been to me so and especially especially Dave's leadership I mean he keeps those meetings Right on. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, there's a, there a mention of a project manager. Chuck could use some help. We talked about that at the last meeting. We we're finishing up the contract for the project manager, and we hope to have him on board next week so he can kind of jump into my shoes and kind of start taking over the oversight of the fence project, and finishing up the, the lake uh, two irrigation, as well as a couple of other things that we need him to, to uh, work on. It's and lightning. Lightning, and as you heard, you know, <laughs> with this assessment, the budget, um, getting ready to, to do budget planning, plus keeping up with the regular daily events that we have here, uh, you know, my focus is, is going to be put on that so I, I can kind of take off that project manager's hat and, and assign that to somebody else. So I'm looking forward to him joining us. Uh, one of the next projects is uh, the shed replacement, which we uh, is described as having three smaller sheds that we're not exactly sure where they went, but they're not here anymore. Uh, we're able to save some of the tools that were in them, uh, but we're turning those three sheds into one. Uh, one larger shed. So prep for that, board approval, uh, prop, the paperwork process is in place. As we get down to, uh, as Bill showed you on that list, some of the pending things for hurricane recovery, uh, we're starting to check those boxes. Um, I also want to mention on, uh, with Chris Harris, uh, as of today, 111 violation letters have been mailed uh, just for this month. Uh, and we have, later you'll see in the packet, we have three warrants for board approval to go to hearing. Uh, there was some discussion about load balancing with Chris because he is, he is our ARC preparation uh, guru, and uh, we've kind of balanced that workload so he's been able to find more time to be out in the community and, and uh, find the violations and kind of work through those. So it, kudos to him on, on how quickly he can, one letter can kind of turn things around pretty quickly with, with Chris's activities. Uh, let's see, I think that's it. I wanted to kind of keep it short because um, I know we have a long meeting here today. So if any, any questions? No, maybe a comment. I thought the fence along uh, Surfside looked good. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, he was a little better. He was a little better. Uh, good. He's not done yet, so we'll put a project manager on him, keep an eye on him. So, uh, but that's my report. Thank you. Okay, uh, the first item we have listed here is the hurricane uh, uh, resolution of hurricane damage. It's the assessment. I mean, it's a proposal. Yeah, okay. We need a motion. Shall I read it first? For sake of clarity, may I ask a question? Yes. Will will this assessment include any repairs to the landscaping that has been damaged or replacements? Just so that it's again clarity for the residents of the community. There, the plan is, is that um, this assessment is not covering landscape damage for two reasons. One is <coughs> it is the opinion of the finance committee that. We need a architectural plan for the uh, re-landscaping of the community that the community itself has a chance to review and agree to and then we can incorporate it into the reserve budgeting process going forward once we decide on what plan to take. Plus we need to take care in doing that because we certainly don't want to replace 500 oak trees. <laughs> you know, those things just break bad. Right? So, uh, yeah, and, and then, you know, also we're trying to, you know, I'm trying to be mindful that the re-landscaping could be that million to a million over time. And I didn't think it was prudent to include that into a, an emergency assessment, emergency repair assessment at this point. Uh, Congress, I agree with your comment on um, the contingency fund. If they don't need to be used, putting them in the landscape. Yeah, we can do is we can pick some key areas like the front entrance and stuff like that and put some of the damage. To but it, to point out that I question that contingency as well because look, it's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. A lot of money. But it, it, that's a standard 
planning method yeah. for a temperature contingency for unknowns like yeah. ours. Yeah. So it is reasonable, and we're going to hope, particularly with our project manager, to keep that as low as possible so we can use it for something else. Right. Um, a perfect example of that contingency is that sinkhole that appeared at the end of Greenland, which at no time did that ever surface. And one of the things that the landscape committee started doing is they're looking into what is our best options in terms of bringing someone in to assess it and tell us what we really need to do. And at that point, we would have to go to the finance committee and the board and see if there's any funds available to do that once we know the cost associated. Are there any plans at this point to deal with at least a band-aid at the band in quotes to make the look of the flower beds and things of that nature look better than they do today? Because I know that is a question that the residents are going to continue to have to solve. There is money in the budget to replace the flowers around up front in the clubhouse, but I don't believe there's any money in the budget for anything else at this point. Gotcha, so no mulching or sod there, or anything there is, of that nature? There, there is sod. Uh, it's raining right now, so that's a good sign. So we've been holding off on uh, sodding where some of the damage is uh, on the boulevard and parkway. Uh, we defer to do uh, mulch this year because we're going right into rainy season and mulch will just wind up in the street. So uh, we do have mulch in the budget for, for next season. Yeah, for fall. For fall, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it was, it's in the 23 budget. Awesome. Okay. okay. Yeah, again, just wanted to have those clear and out so it's yep. well understood by the community. I just, I have a couple of quick comments is that um, I'm a big believer in if we're gonna do this renovation on landscaping, let's do it right the first time and let's do it with professionals. And I think the time and energy uh, from the landscaping committee that's happened over the past six to nine months has been focused on the RFP so now that that's behind them, they can now focus on some type of renovation program. The thing that I might ask them to consider is to maybe do it, because as Bill said, this could get very expensive, is to do it in phases. Uh, do, you know, start in phase one and maybe do a three to five year plan. It's just an idea, but that's, the, that's what I would encourage. But uh, once again, let's do this right. Let's do it right the first time and let's make it look triple A. Yeah, and I think doing it in full transparency with the community is very helpful, too. Yeah. So, shall I read the motion? Please. Okay. A resolution by the Sand Development Community Association, referred to as the Association. Whereas on September 23rd, 2022, Lee County was part of the State of Florida State of Emergency Declaration for Tropical Depression Number 9, as referenced in Emergency Declaration later named Hurricane Ian. Hurricane Ian made landfall in southwestern Florida on September 28, 2022, producing catastrophic storm surge and damaging winds. As a result of the damage occurred from Hurricane Ian in Cape Coral, Florida and elsewhere, on September 29, 2022, the United States government declared a major disaster for the state of Florida. Hurricane Ian caused significant damage to the common areas of the Sandoval community. The Association Board has worked in conjunction with the Associate Gulf Coast to initiate the repair and restoration of the common properties and areas of the Sandoval community and are in the process of working through the remaining repair and restoration tasks. The cost is completed and ongoing repairs resulting directly from Hurricane Ian is net of association insurance claims $1,506,322. Be it resolved that under the authority granted to the association board to levy a valid and binding assessment on the owners to fund the repairs in the common areas that are the result of Hurricane Ian based on Article 7.3 Clause C of the Sandoval Declaration and Section 720.316 uh, paragraph 1, subparagraph J of the Florida Homeowner Association Statutes. The association will levy a 13 in assessment to 
to refer to as the assessment of $1,058 per door to be paid by all association owners of record as of October 1st, 2023. The association owners will be able to pay the assessment with a single payment in addition to the October 1st, 2023 regularly quarterly assessment payment, or an owner may elect to pay the assessment with five quarterly payments of $225 per quarter, commencing on October 1st, 2023, coinciding with the quarterly assessment payment, and completing with the payment due on October 1st, 2024. Any owner who elects to pay the assessment quarterly, as stipulated above, will have to pay the unpaid portion of the assessment to the association in full prior to the transfer of the owner's property to another party. The assessment will be governed by the same delinquency policies and procedures of the association that are applicable for regularly quarterly assessment payments. Once this resolution is approved, the association board will work with the associate to expeditiously provide documentation of the assessment to all owners that may be used by the owners for any personal insurance claims, and in the same or subsequent documentation, provide directions for selecting the payment option. The association committees and associate will work to publish within 10 business days from approval of this resolution the details of the assessment on all relevant websites and community documents to inform existing owners and any potential new owner of the assessment. Okay, now the procedure is to agree to the resolution now and actually vote on the assessment on the first. Is that correct? Well, the procedure is to, I believe, the second, second, this is a motion, and then a board member can, or I can offer the table at the floor for all the time at first. We need to make this a motion. We made the motion. Motion. I'll second. Okay. I'll move a special motion to vote on the first one. I second that. Okay. Now you have to vote on the table. All in favor of the table, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion to table for the first one. Okay. Okay, in the meantime, residents can make your words as they choose through email. Okay. Okay, next item. One of the requests today for an exception is to have a black aluminum fence instead of a bronze fence. And the ARC committee has recommended that we change the rules to include black. So if we vote on that, that issue will not be required. So we need to show it. Okay. I don't mind looking at it. Okay. I'm sorry. 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 I'm
meeting brought in brought trying to get approved that the ARC committee denied. We initially, uh, we initially applied to the ARC committee for our first choice, um, and that was Doc Ron's. And the ARC committee denied that color, and the reason being that it was too dark. So my wife and I, we decided to submit a lighter color, and we submitted this color here, medium bronze, for approval. And we got a response from the uh, art committee that uh, that color was denied as well for being too dark. We thought uh, we were confused. We thought that this was kind of suspicious, uh, considering the dark roofs that were being installed not only on Woodbourne, but throughout the community. So we decided to appeal uh, the art uh, denial, uh, and we met with the committee. And we presented evidence to them that clearly showed that their denial of our medium bronze color was inconsistent with their previous approval of darker color roofs. This roof panel is on Woodbourne. It's very nice. Uh, two of them are already installed on Woodbourne, and two more are going up. Now, terracotta is not even a color that's approved for Woodbourne. So how is this going to prove that enough? But it looks very nice. I, I'm not saying it doesn't look nice, it doesn't fit in, it does. Okay. If you hold them side by side, Tom. Say it again, please. Hold the one you want in that one side by side so we can see them. You're not all right. Yeah. Oh, all right. Let me... This one was also approved by the art committee. This is chalk. This is charcoal gray. There's two of them built on Woodbourne currently. This is darker than the color we're going to have that we're asking for, and this is already approved and built on Woodbourne. You can go outside. This woman. No, I did not take this off the roof. <laughs> This is on Hopesfield, which has the same color scheme requirements as Woodbourne. This is even darker than all. And again, I'm not saying they don't look nice. This one looks absolutely gorgeous on the house. This was approved, and it's darker than our medium bronze. Please try to shorten it, Tom. I'd like to hear from Mark. Yeah, Mark. Well, can I finish? What? How long is your? I'm almost done. Okay. So you can go outside of Greendale and find colors that are uh, that are darker than our medium bronze that are approved. Fairmont has a dark espresso roof. Uh, they have the same requirements as Woodbourne, except for they have the addition of red. But they have a very dark espresso roof, uh, which is darker than our medium bronze. Sundale, they have a dark brown roof that's installed. Bellingham has two dark espresso roofs and a charcoal colored roof. Right side is a black roof, well it looks black, um, and a charcoal color roof. So there's a clear pattern established by the Art Committee to approve darker color roofs. Um, I'm confident that if this matter was brought to a third party, I think the third party would rule that the committee demonstrated indiscriminate and indiscriminate, uh, inconsistent application of the established standards. The committee disregarded its own previous decisions and made decisions based on personal biases or in a discriminatory manner. I'm sorry. The so bottom line accusations there is, I'm not looking at accusations inappropriate. I'm just reading some previous decisions. It's inappropriate. I'm not saying that this, this is what happened here. I think that this you is what the ruling would apply here. You said they were biased. This, no, this is, <laughs> this is what a decision, a civil decision has already been rendered on a civil case. Now, I'm not looking for a hot pink roof. I'm not looking for a purple polka dot roof. This color, this medium bronze. Tom, please cut it short. This medium bronze 
is a, is a warm earth tone color. I think it's going to fit into the name. Ah, we've seen this. I want to hear from Mark. Tell me, tell me why, why you deny that. There's no brown roofs in Sandoval. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, there, there's different variations of tan. There are tans that have now come to light that are appear darker. Um, what we have noticed in our experience now with um, expanding our roof choices is that the metal, standing seam metal, comes out lighter once it's installed on the roof. The stone-coated steel is then darker once installed on the roof. So in the past, ARC has approved certain styles and certain colors because we had a very small picture for a sample. We didn't have a large sample to uh, make our judgment on, nor have we been able to see it on an entire roofing system. So those were the reasons um, for our decision. Okay, but you, your decision is made on by street, not by not by community. Exactly. Okay. We go off of that so your street is, I your street is wood. the Woodbourne. Okay, what what about Woodbourne? What have you got on Woodbourne? Wood grays and blues. Is um, grays, tans, and blends. Blends. I know it's. The problem with blends is that they now come in so many different color choices, but each developer that developed each street had a specific roof tile from a certain manufacturer that they used. Now, those tiles at this point in time may be discontinued, and now homeowners are given the option to expand their choices beyond tile, not just flat tile. Now we can do barrel tile now, we have standing seam, etc. I this is not my decision. It's a board decision. Of course. I, I'm reluctant to go against art. Alright. But what what do you guys think is, is reasonable? Ty? <laughs> Trust me, I'm no roof expert. Um, I, I think staying with the color palettes that each of the communities or neighborhoods are approved for is very important. Now I'm even more conflicted because of the word blends. Um, if it was grays and tans, I think that is very easy to determine. Blends opens a whole, it, that's just my opinion. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware of the word blend, so I, I'm sorry, I, I don't, I'm interested in the other commentaries. Okay. I just think the colors that he presented that he wants to what other houses have are comparable. I don't, I don't see the issue. As far as everything else, I don't have a comment on that. Okay, let's go. Um, I also don't like going against the York, but the samples that he showed are pretty close to the, the tans, so, okay. That, was, that yeah. was my thought too, that his medium, uh, brown. medium brown or bronze or whatever you're calling it is very close to the other samples that are already there. So consequently, I'm going to support. I honestly am having difficulty determining the color difference between a few of those samples. So yeah. I fall into that hole. Yeah. Yeah, Did you hold up the sample again? Yeah, I took them out. The samples. Yeah, the samples. You want to see what you want? Never mind. Yeah. But that's it. Don't, don't worry about it. Come on, we're getting it. You hold up the sample you want, please. No. no, that's that's metal for you. Well, this is the same as what you need which is what, what, what required. I have a question. Yes, I, and I'm just taking a minute. 
So I think your comment was that you had a very small sample picture and did. Well, let me let, let, can, can I, can, let me finish. Uh, you had a very small sample to look at as an R, and had you had this full sample, it may have changed your decision. May have. Again, I can't say yes or no. Let me just say that on appeal, if you recall, I bought this sample. And You're not helping me. Well, no, you say this sample wasn't available, right? Why so far? Well, again, it's subjective um, because. Is it? Uh, what gauge is that? Gauge 24. There's a minimum, there's a 26. Yeah. What'd you say, Tyler? It said the minimum is 26, so it's a higher gauge. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting 22. But are you See, building a have fortress have over there? <laughs> 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 Category seven. Do I hear, do I hear a motion to, to uh, accept his appeal and over, overturn the ARC decision? <coughs> Make a motion to overturn ARC's decision. And I'll second. Okay, let's, let's a show of hands. All in favor? <laughs> Let me count again, please. Five, one, two, three, four, no, this four, five, six. Abstain. Oh. I'm a okay. chicken. Okay. Passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Tim the house. And Amy. Who's coming up? Just him? We know you. Jim, as you know, is a lakes expert. He's a, one of the original lakes guy. Thanks, John. You do a fine job. Yeah, it took me several months to get up to speed on, on metal roofs, colors, solar reflectance index. Um, there's so much to digest in, in understanding our color palette. You know, it, it describes reds and pants, but when I, I look at the tiles, they vary. You know, it, it's not just like uh, some of the literature just wants that color. So, so I had submitted uh, a copy of Cali, and that was only after driving around and, and looking at different properties. Uh, it, it is impossible to really conclude from a small swatch or a bringing in the whole panel is one thing, but, but they, this doesn't give us a whole lot to go on um, until you really go out there. I know there's visualizers that you can look at, put it on the roof and, or with your house photo. Um, but I, I just felt with reds and pans that the copper falls right in the middle of that. It's an orange. Um, the current tile we have is, is described as hues of reddish orange with black streaks. And you know, of course it's worn, it's, Doll, um, it doesn't have quite the luster that it did initially, but, um, but I, I think the color that, that we requested does fall within the palette. Do you have a sample? Uh, Yeah, I, I don't see that. I, 
that's what the developers wrote when uh, Sandoval was developed it, and explicitly said at that time, no shingle, metal, uh, metallics, et cetera. I mean, that, that is what our standards said. What is the approved color palette for what, what neighborhood region? Oh, I'm sorry, Ash Jeremy. So tans and reds. Tans and reds, and so is copper a tan or a red? No. I mean, it's, the current color of my roof is not tan or red, it is a hue of reddish orange. There's a And comments? I think that's a step too far. And I, I don't think there's anything in the documents that specifically says that the alley is, is prohibited. Uh, maybe the four metal groups were allowed in San Diego, yeah. but I, I, I did not, I've done a lot of review of those documents. You do not see that. According to our, is, uh, our documents do say the tally colors are, are not acceptable. Yeah, I think it would be helpful to see that before making a decision. That's true. Seems like well, a lot of this has to do with the size of the samples. Yeah, I mean, are we require a bigger sample? I, I, I don't know. I, I think art could make decisions from paper. Yeah. But well, I know what I, I'm saying. It's causing a lot of problems for everybody. Tell you what, uh, Jim, I recommend that we table this one until the first. All right, I'm fine with that. So. Do you mind? Or you think we should go? I would, I would, I would, I would step up and make a decision. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, is there anyone that, uh, do, do we have enough discussion to determine your how you feel about it? Anybody want to talk more? I would love to see a roof, a completed roof, that had this metallic, because it does say it's got a high solar reflective index. But as Todd says, then that's delayed. That's true of most metal and, and the colors that they use. Uh, lighter would be more appropriate for a climate. I mean, if somebody wants a darker roof, I think they formulate pigments Mr. President, I'd make a motion that the request is denied because it does not uh, doesn't meet the ashberry color of tan and red. It's, it, it's not uh, that color. <coughs> Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion of that motion. Now we can discuss the motion. Any discussion? Ready for the I, question. I wish there were, I wish we could see something like the last presentation where we had all the samples. Okay. Any more discussion? The motion is to deny the request. request. All those in favor of the motion to deny, raise your hand. One, two, Opposed. Four to two. The vote carries. I'm sorry, Jim. Well, well, not. I, I still think there's there's a lot more learning. I understand. I mean, I mean, I would have preferred. Maybe we should talk to Art further about maybe updating this thing. In which case, don't have you got? Have you you have a builder all lined up or anything or a broker? We signed up, so I think we're we're following the procedure here. Okay. All right. Well, Well, it's been denied. I wouldn't come back unless Art wants us to. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think we're welcome to. I don't think we would give a fair review. We have to support Art, Jim. It's it's a very important thing to do. But I don't see the metallic thing that they're seeing, so I I would prefer that would have been presented before the decision. Next item, Kathleen Madden. Kathleen Madden, Jim. Yep, Good. I go by Kathy. Yeah. Uh, Kathy Madden, 265 Brightside Court. Uh, I'm in the process of uh, 
building a pool and met with ARC and um, part of my pool is um, including a, a V-pan roof and uh, everything else has been approved to date. It's just this component. So I'm adding uh, in a section, my one eye is pretty small, it's like uh, 13 by 11. And so I'm adding 10 by 10 just to make a little bit more shade space. Um, it'll be white and it would match the cage. Um, when I looked around the community, it appears there are many of these already in place. And so <clears throat> this one, I have a picture of Stony Hill Court where you can see one, two, three, four, five of them already in place. And um, when you look at Ashbury, there are several in place there as well. So I'm not clear. And when I met with Art, it appeared to me that the decision wasn't a decline as much as there was nothing in writing that said they could approve it. I didn't hear what you last said. <clears throat> it was stated that there was nothing they had in writing so that they could approve it. They did understand that there were many others in place already. Do you, do you know if those existing standing structures have had approval? I have no idea. I have no way of knowing. Because our bylaws specifically state no flat roof, no flat coverages. And this is a flat roof. Correct, but and they're and already in place. It's, it's, in yeah, I understand. And so I understand that. that. Right. I see that? Yeah. Please, I'm sorry. Yeah. It, it's in your packet. It, I can't it, find it. Oh, okay. Question for Art. Did five or so, at least on the Stony Hill, that approval be put in place? Not since we've all been on ARC. What has happened in previous um, committees, I can't speak on. Uh, but so, so we have no record, paper, letter approval from. That would be a great question for compliance board. from back. Those Are you a member of our? Who's that? Oh, is that? That's Marty. Marty, I couldn't recognize you back there. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you have. Yeah. We have never, we did not know what a flat pan roof was until the ladies came and presented to us. So it was a learning curve for us. And like they said, we did not deny it. It was more of a what we do. Because when they pulled up, I guess it was a Google map, and they were pointing them out. Either a mansard or a peak roof. It cannot have a flat roof, right? So, th and this is flat. I wonder uh, how those ever got in there. One thing we need to, one thing our communications committee is doing, they're going to start recording the uh, minutes uh, and the decisions we make so that we'll have that a source for, for looking up these things. We need to do the same thing about our decisions. What's yeah, I, I would just comment that I've done a lot of walking around without looking into people's backyards, but you know, nothing seems well, to be damaged in all of these other places. So those are pan roofs. Yeah, those are all pan roofs. All that white that you see is a pan roof. <laughs> I just they all did good in there. Yeah, they did well in the hurricane actually. <laughs> <laughs> There were a lot of cages that didn't do so well. <laughs> but you, you, you caught us where we don't know what we're doing, okay? But, but the, the, what I've seen so far is it's, is it's um, flat roofs are not allowed in San Diego, yet we have them, okay? That doesn't mean that we should have more. Maybe it means that we got them and we shouldn't. Have. So, you know, more wrong don't make right. I think before we make a decision, I want to learn more about this. I really do. Okay, let me share with you. I found out earlier that um, within Sandoval, there's 15 or 16 of these pan roofs. And 
And also in one area, there's six. Maybe that's the one that we've just seen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're in the back of the house, which there is more exceptions allowed, I think. No, no one sees it coming, could it be put in. Yeah. So I have a tendency, she doesn't have a very good <coughs> lanai, and this allows them to have more coverage in the summer weather than you know, doing really things outside. So I've, I've I, been a, a realtor in Cape Coral for 21 years. Flat roofs have real problems. All of them have real problems. Drainage, accumulation of debris. Uh, it, 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 it's not pretty. And if these are working, I, I don't understand. But it, I think that our developers, when they said no flat, no flat blue cages, I did it. But probably this, I, I don't want to rule on this until we check it out a little further. Would you mind tabling this for the first? Or do you think we should go ahead like this one? What is your timetable, Kathleen? Well, they were supposed to, we've been doing this for a couple of months now, trying to get this approved. So um, yeah. it, it's supposed to start June 28th. What if we say no? What do you do? Um, we'll have to come up with another plan. Be, you know, and the, the other thing is, if you look, if you walk around, you'll see, you can't even see them in, from the front. You can't. I believe you. And um, there's just a slight decline to the, it runs, the water runs off of it. And it goes, you know, the cage goes completely around. Tell me what the degree of incline is. I can find out. I don't have to. Please. They do have a super drain down. So that seven inch super drain runs right across it. Yeah, but if it's flat, it won't, it won't work right. It has to have some, some incline to work. I'm sure there's a pitch to it. Okay, and how did they, did any of them get damaged in any of We didn't see any damage. We went to all the houses we could find and we didn't see any of them. If you look at the picture, you'll see roofs that have tarps on them. These do not. They didn't get damaged. They well, it means, the house, it means the house didn't get hit hard. Well, well, they're right beside some that did, so I don't know. You know, I, I guess, you know, we're just trying to do the right thing, so we did not get a strong objection. It was just a matter of feeling like we didn't yeah. have all the way. Actually, it seems like ARC was very supportive they just didn't feel like they had documentation to support Okay, but the documentation we can find in our docs say no flat roofs, so that's why I think it's a good question. Marty, you have, is Marty still here? Yeah. What do you think, Marty? Does the improvement um, need a permit and inspected by the city? Yeah, everything needs a permit. And we've gone ahead and um, sent in the information as is right now. The, the reason why I ask that is just from a safety standard. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm again in between on this because it's really hard to penalize somebody for following the rules. Right. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, how do we control this moving forward or else we're just gonna open it up to... Uh, and, and the other issue, Todd, is we have precedents. So there's 15 of them up there without knowing if the developer control board allowed them in, they by default have rewritten their documents before handing control over to us. This picture looks like it's freestanding. Oh, that was just something we found online. Oh, okay. That's what really turned me off. Okay, no. So that's going to be, the it's design, going to be, it's going to be attached to your enclosure. It's going to be attached. Yes. And that was it's going to be off. I don't think it's going to be out of the park. Mario wants to speak. Yes, ma'am. If you want to go with this, then you will have to give a directive to ARC yeah. to write up a recommendation that takes away the no flat rules so that then they would be approved. I don't know how you would ever begin to grandfather people in because we never knew if they were approved or not. But you'd have to give us a directive and come to that. If somebody along the way, 
the red button on the wall. <laughs> 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 Who's gonna write it? Who's gonna write the spec? Okay, John. Marty had something about safety. Yeah, somebody mentioned safety. I don't know who all I talked to. Um, about the safety of the roads and how they were structured. Could you give information about that, please? Are they like concrete posts? Are they metal posts? They're metal. They're metal posts that are filled with concrete. Okay. <coughs> And it would be attached to two, on two sides, it would be attached to the house. It's an interlocking design. Uh, and it's not just a little bit, it's a panel. Right, I understand. There's also kind of a sky too. Yeah, you put skylights in it. I mean, it's essentially, it could be a sunroom. We're not, or a sunroom. We're not doing that. We just need the cover for like outdoor kitchen and oh. bar and that type of thing. It would help if you would display some slope into some, at least some slope just the last one. I'm sure we could have them do that. Yeah. Well, if, would, would Art write, write the recommendation? Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. I'm going to make a motion to accept the panel's room. I second it. You, with the caveat that Art does this. And then maybe Art can use uh, what is included. Okay. All right. Sure. Uh, I hear a second. Stand. Any more discussion? The only thing I want to say is yeah. I want to make sure there's a slant pitch to it so that it's not perfectly flat. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Something else to say. Yes, sir. I have something to say, and this is not directed at your project. My fear is <coughs> if we're not specific in what we're going to allow. We could open the floodgates to carports being added to the back of the property. Right, right. And I'm concerned about that from a, both a safety stand, standpoint and also an aesthetic standpoint. Mm -hmm. So it's not directed at your particular project, but, we need, <coughs> but I think we need, we need to make sure we have this under control before this. Okay, if we add control. the words as part of a food closure, is that sufficient? I, I don't know. I, Bill? Um, I think, I, I, I think Ted's got a bill of concern. I think we can approve this project and, and approve no others until we have a recommendation to change the design guidelines from the ARP that we vote on so that we have a chance to look at some different wording for that. Because I think you're right, it could be, you could stick an RV back there now. I can't even imagine a car park. Wouldn't we have all that garages? There's nothing wrong with saying no, people. You know what? Sometimes no is a good thing. You know, we moved into this community because we think of building consistency. And it seems like every meeting we have, everybody's rules are getting changed constantly. No. And then you want to know why home sales are down. There's already 15, 16 of them here. Okay. We don't know if they've been here before or not. Right. 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 We've had a motion. We're out and discuss. Any further discussion? The motion is to accept it. One. And further, put further definition. I don't like rewriting bylaws. Okay. Are you ready for a vote? We need the motion, I'm sorry. The motion is, is to accept, accept the stand. 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 And stand to accept the presentation and with the slant to the roof. And only this uh, project that is coming before us tonight until we have the guidelines for the future and roads. All, all those in favor, raise your hand. <laughs> One. You made the motion. 
I did make a motion. I second it, but I just don't like doing voice and carry. Two. The motion. All opposed? Yeah. Motion to read it. Okay. Uh, presentation of violations. Uh, yes. We have three violations for the board approval. The first one in your packet, I can only go by the uh, account number 00287-6193. Violation of 30 dilapidated dwelling. I make a motion to uh, approve that. To send it to, uh, I guess the proper terminology is to the uh, Covenants Committee for, for a hearing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Thank you. I'll second. Sorry, guys. Second, Ms. Hood, Dave. Second, uh, second violation, 002-87-0720. I'd make a motion that this uh, also goes to the Covenant Committee for second. money. Second, my bill. Thank you. What are you saying? You can't hear it? Tell them to put the mic by hand. Who's the mic? Who's Bill's? I think my mic No. Yes. Right, sorry about that. You guys don't listen. Uh, last one. Zero zero eight eight dash two six six six. Chuck, I'd make a motion that this is moved to the Covenants Committee for hearing. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? There you go. And, and please deliver a message to Chris. Thank you so much for sending out 111 letters this month. That's incredible, thank you. Right. Are those first notices? Or first? Um, only no. two, first, second, this and third. Yeah, I these are third. These are third. Okay, that completes the, uh, okay, that's what it is.
created a board of directors motions and approval tracking spreadsheet so that we can post it on the web page for future reference. Uh, working on the art committee to make some changes to the art web page and we'll be, uh, we'll be listing roof colors by lot number for residential reference. Uh, re recently rewrote the fitness page, rewriting the safety and security page, establishing a lending library page, and we're continuing to proofread all the other web pages. Social media, YouTube Samuel Video Box has 551 subscribers. Our goal is to reach over a thousand. Facebook Samuel King Carl group page, 1,537 subscribers. We, along with the social director and social committee members, continue to update the current weekly information. We think this is where most residents are getting their updates. Instagram Samuel Lifestyle. 89 followers. This is a new account set up by our social director or lifestyle director, Jessica. Um, we encourage residents to search this page and follow it. Pinterest, Sandoval HOA Landscape Boards. Jessica worked on the Landscape Committee to set up a Pinterest account for the purpose of displaying pictures of the approved and non permitted trees, and plants, and shrubs. She has put together 1,362 pictures of plant life and created these Sandoval landscaping boards. Sandoval Today newsletter, we're still looking for resident volunteers to help restart the newsletter. And that's it, there's no questions. Okay, would you, um, when you send out an email, is it possible to maybe put a hyperlink into Live Sandoval so people could get it, get it easier? Is it? Yeah. If we, if we want more people to get it, right? Yeah. yeah, the idea is to get, there's a lot of information out there, sure. and the communication committee has done a lot of work to update it and bring it current. Would that work, you think? Yeah. It won't work. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, Mark. Mary. And you have it for center. Good. You're up. And I have two large numbers. Oh, you're up. you got to find it out, right? <laughs> We're going to do a duet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're averaging about 45 to 50 applications. Mm -hmm. We average 45 to 50 applications a week. Uh, with the whole EN thing, if we were meeting every Saturday. I wish I had the total, but if you figure 100 a month, that's what we're up to. Um, of the 100 a month, we did not make maybe 20 applications. The majority of those applications are due to um, things, and we hate to deny them over insurance or over a license, or they didn't even send us a call. They'll say, I'm getting a new roof. I'm like, okay, okay, great. But what kind of roof, what color, what manufacturer, you know, just basic details that we need. Um, let's see what else. Oh, communications. I cannot sing their faces high enough. They have worked with us, met with us multiple times, and we have taken an Excel sheet that we already had that had every single, every single one of you have a block number you may not know, or like some there's BB17, BB16, AB, whatever. And every single, person has this lot number, it has your name, it has your address, and then we've taken that file with their help and we're writing down. If you ask for the purple roof last week, then we write down purple roof, blah, 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 manufacturer. And I just went through the whole list. I was kind of shocked with what Mr. LaFleur said because we have not approved any red roofs on um, Woodburn. So I had to check my list and I brought this to my mind. So we're putting on that web page, the Excel document that you were approved for, Westlake, Burrell, Concrete Tile, Flat, Sand Dune Blend. And when I say Sand Dune Blend, I say it because these original rules on Belleville, Clairefont, what else, um, Anguilla, those are blends. It's like you take a light color, tan, 
a medium color tan and a darker tan, and you put them together, and that's a blend. Um, Casabare, their roof, their original roof, anybody in phase three has flint, flint ridge gray, and that's similar to a blend. It's a gray base, but it has these little streaks in it. So when you get two colors put together, that's considered a blend. You may not even realize it, but that's. But if you look at a Belleville to some roofs that have not been replaced, you'll see that blend. That's what Pulte, majority of Pulte Street that had the villas, Greendale Woodburn, those, if they've not been replaced, that is, that's the, it was the original Florida blend. They took away the Florida blend and they added orange to it. Now they call it new Florida blend. So people are getting upset. Well, my neighbor has Florida blend. Well, yeah, we know, but you have the original Florida blend, not the new Florida blend. I know you're not taking advantage to some other people. Maybe we'll hear all this and understand our thinking. Yes. And yeah. blend is three so separate tiles of three. It doesn't apply to metal. Then. No. No. Because mm -hmm. metal is one about. color. Yeah. So thank heavens for communication. They've helped us do this. We knew we needed to do it. We just couldn't figure out a way to do it. But they got us on track. So Alex and I are taking our. We took every single street. We wrote down every single application that we had approved with the manufacturer, the color, um, whether it was a concrete roof, whether it was a stone coated roof, or whether it was a thing you see metal roof. And we've done one, one street so far on the Excel file. Um, but hopefully it's going to help people figure out what, because that's one of our major emails that we get is what colors are approved. And we can tell you it's going to be approved, and we approve it, and the next week it's been discontinued. You know, and then they have to come back with something else. And a lot of people, you know, concrete was being, um, it was said that they were not coming available until like six or eight months, but they're getting back up and going. Mm -hmm. And I think it's Westlake Doral that has their Texas plant working on covers for Florida. So that has helped the concrete tile get approved. Um, in fact, we had a, a project on Birdmont. We approved it in February and it went up last week less than two months ago. So it, it's getting better. I'm sorry. I just keep going on. That's what I I'm a former teacher. I can make my point. I just say, okay. Marty and Allison, first of all, thank you for dealing with this very difficult situation. Yeah, I mean, I will, yes. um, well, you've been dealt a really you, bad set of cards yeah. and you've navigated it and you've tried to be as nice as you possibly could. So thank you for well, and let's not mention, let's not forget to mention Jean Clement, Brady yes. Stevens, and Rob Purcell, who yes. is currently okay. traveling so, west. So I have a what if. What if, okay. And because I've seen it, okay. and I'm not going to be specific, ARC approves a color. Mm -hmm. And then there's the abracadabra, different color put on the roof that doesn't fit the palette. Okay. Um, What's the game plan? I mean, well, I, I, know, I, I know I'm throwing it at you, but no, what no, is no, the No, no, I can tell you. Um, so, you know, I keep the file that says ABC was approved for Westlake Coconut with White Into, which is an Ash Bailey uh, White. David Weekly had Canyon Red, Dusk, and Coconut. Coconut is the lighter tan color. So I approved you for coconut. Sometimes between the time you're approved and the, it goes up, you change your mind. And you didn't put up coconut. You put up something you shouldn't have put up. Well, the emails that we get, the emails have been flying the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. now, there's a few of these projects going on. Once it's approved, then it gets turned to Bias. We don't, you know, it's, we're the approval side. Chris is the, you did wrong side. So all we can do is refer that person to Chris. Chris goes out to look. He verifies the application, what they're approved for. And then 
I keep the applications, and some of you might be in this book. I just returned six bunch of applications that dated back to um, July through December 2020. People never ask for inspection. Well, I think, you know, my poor bedroom is covered by in applications. Um, so that's what we do, is that the face. Well, I think I've gotten into 22 now. So, but, but you've answered, I think, my question, or my concern is that it's turned over to Chris in compliance, and at that particular point, he handles it in regards to if ARC approved, like you said, a certain color, and it automatically, if a switcheroo happens, uh, it's identified and then it's handled through uh, compliance. regard to the compliance part of the switcheroo, um, there is an item agenda that we're going to be bringing up to the neighborhood liaisons, and that is that Chris, in compliance, lays out a spreadsheet of each street and the number of the address of the home, the project they requested, and the specific information on it, if it was approved and or denied so that the neighborhood liaisons would get a copy of this list and know if things are going on because there's projects going on all around us and one of the concerns brought up to my neighborhood liaison on my street is are these contractors licensed and insured? Because what if something happens? Thank you. Thank you. Social. Tom, do you want to present the social? Yeah, I'll just ask a question in between as I walk up here. Have we restored the deposit flows for certain projects? And maybe it's a good time to do that. Okay. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you, John, for recognizing all of the committees and how hard we are working this year because they are doing a lot more than they've done in the past. Uh, second, I will go over, uh, I guess I'll start with finances. Uh, for the social committee and how we're doing things this year. Um, I can say that we've already exceeded the income that we were supposed to have this year. And on our just a regular income, our rental income, if it's not there, we have six rentals in June, we will exceed that. So that's where some of that income that was mentioned before is going. We're trying to get more things for younger people. We do have a team movie, we have a team dance, we have arts and crafts. So those projects are just coming up in June and July. So we're trying to get more and more things in. And we're doing different things other than just potlucks. We have the weather girl in here at Coffee and Conversation. Uh, we have Lee Health coming in here, the summer series to try to educate us on things that we're doing. We got the blood drives coming in. We got the food trucks coming in. So there's a lot of different things going on at this particular time. And uh, we are now starting to focus toward our what I'm going to call fall winter potlucks that will have entertainment. Um, we're going to start to look at Christmas because Christmas is our biggest project and it's going to take a lot more time. So we've got a lot of things going on and we now actually meet twice a month instead of once a month because there are many, many things that we need to go in. And I'm going to keep it short because we're already late and we're most about the people at home. Those that are at your homes, thanks for watching. <laughs> Bam. Amenity. Any questions? Uh, amenities. Everything's going well. The pool's running great. Uh, the pool company's doing their job. It's keeping it clean. I, I haven't received any complaints. Uh, the gym, all the new equipment that we purchased six months ago were uh, serviced, I believe, a couple days ago. You know, they, they're going to come out twice a year. Um, Bocce, I'll say Bocce for, for safety and security. Everything's going well in, in, in amenities, no, no issues, I, I believe. And safety and security, just like Chuck said, the gates are going to be closed uh, at all times. Um, school is going to be done soon, and uh, there's been a lot of uh, pedestrian, non resident traffic going through, so for safety, and security, that's, that's what happened there. Um, security is still checking ID at, uh, at the basketball courts on a regular basis. I know this because my 
little daughter comes home and she tells me. So I'm like, good. So if you don't have your ID, then go home. And, you know, that's, uh, that's it. Safety and security traffic. We're, we're looking at a number of things uh, to help with traffic, putting signs up on the parkway um, in the middle for uh, pedestrians that still walk across the way, even though there's nowhere to go, they still walk their dogs and such, and it'll slow cars down if you see them there. Um, looking at uh, LEDs and the stop signs at nighttime so that they, they're brighter, you know, more visible, visual stuff. Trying to uh, get a contract for painting the lines on the streets because they're, they're definitely faded. They're very much faded and uh, that needs to be done. But uh, other than that, everything's going well. That's it. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Jimmy.
repairs of the phase three lakes based on different levels of fix and we'll need to incorporate that into our plan as well as what we hear from Lake Doctor, which I understand you now have the report. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, neighborhood reps, you know, it, it's not really something to report. Neighborhood reps meetings are an exchange of, of information ideas, it's not a, a kind of reporting things. And uh, uh, so Lori said she had no report, and it really is not appropriate. <laughs> Next, uh, Bill, do you have a separate? Take it out of the I should, yeah. So, the chairperson of uh, the Finance Committee's got an update. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, Sean Kinney from uh, Finance Committee there. Uh, as, as Bill uh, reviewed everything earlier, Treasurer's report, uh, you know, we met earlier this week, reviewed hurricane and expenses, um, proceeds, discussed the uh, reserve, reserve assessment. Uh, we reviewed all the financials for April, uh, review of the reserve uh, cash flows uh, on the accounts there. Reviewed the uh, delinquency trends. Uh, those, again, continued favorable as, as uh, Bill reviewed. Uh, we've got the committee working on uh, banking risk mitigation. So again, trying to stay below the FDIC limits. Uh, the committee's working strong on that and uh, should have some ideas there. And uh, uh, Bill, uh, Treasurer is also working to give us access to uh, invoices to help them review that. Uh, discussing with Strategic Planning Committee, uh, again, that uh, building, building that out as they requested. And so, yeah, really just everything flowing well. And, and just Bill does a tremendous amount of effort uh, on, on behalf of the things and, and, and makes it easy for the committee to help oversee it. So, going well. Are you getting are you the financial reports on time now? Uh, yes, I mean, yeah, so what, so they get a, an appended version of the report that goes to the board. Okay, so as soon as the, uh, as soon as it's distributed to the board, I get the first eight pages. That's what we're getting by the 20th, though, so it's, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, I got a call from one of the, one of the presidents of one of the uh, condos associations saying that they, they, they haven't gotten it. Months. So, we talked to them about that, Jerry. See, associate convention. We, we've been arguing with them going all the way back to November. We typically run somewhere between 45 to 60 days after the 20th of the month that we would have anticipated receiving financials. Yes, I just, I guess you call three, three days ago, I got uh, March financials. You have to talk to Heather. I have since November, multiple times a week. Okay. She points the blame at Kathy. Kathy says, I'll take care of it. And then the next month, we don't see anything. And it's been that vicious cycle. Yeah, so it's been that vicious cycle going back to November. Okay, Mr. President, just, just a quick comment. Sean and Bill both, thank you for your tremendous work on the both the, the financials as well as the hurricane assessment that uh, takes a lot of work. And also wanted to just mention excellent strategy with putting the contingency in there, because if you've ever had to deal with the project, you never have the number nailed, and having that contingency in there is a brilliant strategy. So thank you for doing that. That, that was a real point of discussion during, during the meeting. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, All right, thank you. you for doing that. Yeah, okay. Covenants, covenants. Uh, there's a little bit of a communication pickup, so I'll be getting with the chairman on uh, ensuring that we are all present for the one that's going to occur this month. Uh, we did have those two fines that we issued last month. No appeal was requested, so we were all right. But I'm sure we're going to start to have those appeals with the 111 letters going out, so we'll make sure that we're meeting correctly. I will get with the chair on that, so there was no meeting held. Thursday. I'll be uh, as brief as I can. Uh, Chairman Bill Dunker uh, asked me to talk for risk management. We continue to look at vendor contracts and make modifications and recommendations. Just wanted to briefly talk about and not to, uh, to repeat what Bill was saying in regards to the insurance portion of the hurricane.
Hurricane Ian claim, but just a couple of very important facts, and I'll be very brief. Our current insurance policy does not allow for public adjusters, and it's very clear in that particular policy. So with the expertise that's on the committee, more specifically with Craig uh, Snyder and his uh, professional background as an insurance professional, uh, we've been able to do most of the heavy lifting as well with uh, Chuck's efforts in order to get the documentation that's needed to the insurance company. Uh, Craig reminded me today that two weeks ago we got notification uh, and were advised that our adjustment company had changed and our adjuster had changed. So if, to share all of your frustrations out there, you can only imagine uh, you know, if the cards have been moved around on us just a little bit. So the great news is Craig Snyder is on top of uh, trying to get uh, our documentation for a further review of some additional insurance monies. As Bill alluded to earlier, a major portion of our losses that are noted in the assessment were not insured. More specifically, debris removal is not included in any type of insurance policy, and the fence work, which is going to be a large portion of this, uh, was only limited to $30,000, which is very typical for a commercial HOA policy. That's the max that they will insure. Uh, landscaping is not covered as far as in the insurance policy, and the one thing that Bill did emphasize in his presentation is the deductible was $165,000. So if you look at that and you take it and you look at it from a gross base and net that off, uh, that's where the 211 is to date and we're hopefully going to recover some more dollars, which that number is unknown at this time. So um, that's all I have on risk management. Well, you know what? I have Mr. Kern who's going to do that. Jerry? Planning. Um, we've been unable to meet the last two weeks due to my personal schedule. Um, we have been communicating through email within the group. Um, we did our, on 5 1, we had our presentation to all of the uh, liaisons and, and several of our chair folks. I've had multiple conversations with various committees um, to get a little further definition as to what we're exactly looking for. Committee, our committee has put together our game plan of how we're going to start with the data gather phase, which is where we're currently at. We're still kind of waiting. Um, I think strategic planning, safety, security, communications has returned their goals to us so far. Um, we're still waiting on a lot of the other committees. Um, but I've, I've heard from several of them. I know they're, it's on their radar. They're working on it. Um, you know, but that's going to be the first element in component of what we're going to be focused on. Once we understand where those committees are at, what focal point they currently have, we'll, um, we'll, we're going to start to look at some trends, try to figure out what commonalities do we have so that we can have a better structured idea from a holistic sandball perspective, what, what are the various focal points and strategies that we're going to be focused on. And then our analysis process will expand to look for uh, gaps, you know, what are some areas we should be focusing on, and maybe none of it's falling on any existing committees. So that's the overall game plan of what we're going to be focused on. Um, but it all really s starts with where are we today, and that's unfortunately part of the, the slow process of getting it going, you know, but it's, it's hard, to, hard to know where you want to go if you don't know where you're currently at. As part of the strategic plan, I assume you're covered here including how we structure our reserve funding in the future? I think we'll be taking that recommendation from the Finance Committee. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's the thought, is, is that the Strategic Planning Committee, you know, I'm not going to try to dig too deep into the finance world because we've got a great group that does that. I'm not going to worry about the landscape or, or lakes because we've got great folks doing all that kind of stuff. So as long as we can rely on the committees themselves and, and rely upon the strength of all of our other committees, you know, it's definitely not the strategic planning committee's expectation to, you know, co cover those areas in any great detail because we're going to rely on their knowledge and expertise to provide that for us. <laughs> yes, he is. 
but yeah, that's pretty much where we're at with strategic planning. So we're already focused on, um, like I said, we are, we as a group have identified a number of areas that we are expecting to see uh, some coverage <laughs> that relates to, um, for instance, external factors that have an impact on Santa whether it's local government, um, you know, hurricane preparedness. There's a lot of things that I think we have identified as potential gap areas, and, I'm, and we're under the assumption that we probably aren't going to see projects from any of the committees that are falling into those areas. So we're already looking forward on getting the plan put together and not just sitting back and waiting. But, you know, unfortunately, we don't have a, a true timeline. I think our, our line in the sand is we want to get this put together as quickly as possible so that we have it available for the board prior to budgets. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Our next meeting is uh, June 29th. June 1st. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Regular meeting. Yes. June 29th. Next June 1st. Mr. President, can I just say one thing to go back to a comment that you made earlier in the meeting? I just want to say that I think it's totally awesome some of the synergy that we've got going on in these committees. Yes. It's the, the, the most dynamic I've seen since I've lived here, right. and I think it, it's fantastic. And so uh, thanks to everybody who's participating. Absolutely. Well, based on that, if I have no, we have no objection, the meeting is adjourned, and we'll now have comments from the floor if anybody would like to address the board. Anybody? Yes, come on yes. Uh, I don't need to get off that. I got a deep voice, everybody can hear. Um, all I uh, worry about is that lady, like she asked for that flat roof thing yeah. in the back of the house. I mean, why are you gonna approve that? I mean, this is a community. I moved to this community because everything is like people. Okay? I used to live outside of the community where I had a neighbor who had a goat. <laughs> they all want to go next to, next to the house. You understand? Pretty soon they're going to be asking that you have the house to go So when you think about that flat roof, give it a good thought. Well, we, we voted it down. Okay, I know that. I know that. Or you say you're going to look at her plan again and stuff like that. I don't think we are. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the, the problem I see is that I, I worry about these people put the car force back there. Or yeah, that's why I'm going to, if we let, if we allow the flat roof, that's the next thing they're going to A car force. Uh, can I have a question? Well, not on my house, I have a question. They said that there was about 12 or 15 of them that they found. Is, is there is no way to trace any kind of permit back to that homeowner? Like there are no records well, for it, the lots to see if they ever had permission to do that. I mean, I get their argument that well they had yeah, them. Uh, we know, but we don't know if they were approved. Because who sees back there? Well, it, that's one reason that we need to have a record of what we do. Right. Better records and have those records be searchable. Right. Because to do it now, to go back and try to. We, we don't have the resources to check I mean, that stuff I out. have all my paperwork from my pool, well, and sure from my storm shutters, and from everything. But we, we lost, have everything. But we changed management companies. That's terrible. We lost a lot of records. That's terrible. Oh, right. But maybe we can Twice. ask the residents to show their paperwork yeah, that right. was approved. Like, say, and they'll be able to say yes or no. Well, and if you comes. get somebody that shows you an approved one, at least you know it went through an approval. Huh. If 15 of them all say, I don't have it, then you want to believe that it never happened. If one of them shows it, then at least you know somebody went through the process and it's approved. To me, that's 15 violations. But because they did something they weren't supposed to do. Well, it is a violation. We have tons of violations around town that are mine. Somebody puts a tree up that didn't ask for it. But, you know, we, we, can't, we can't check all this stuff. Every single resident had to file in the office. That's what I'm talking about. So if we, and I don't know when, Anybody don't have time to do this. But if we can identify the exact street and address that has a flat pan roof, right. okay. and we could then backtrack. I, I mean, I'm not allowed to touch the files, but the you can do it on LEPA. Yeah, we, not the article. Yeah. Well, as long as it's a permit, it's on LEPA. No, you can at least identify what the house number is on LEPA by making that up. Yeah. Sure. But as 
far as ARC is concerned, yeah. that application and approval would be in their personal resident file. Yeah, that, if you time, time, if you time, time. Time. I can't trust you. Right, well, yeah, you look forward by not making sure we, whatever rules are there, you follow. Exactly. And you're coming, you, you know, like, uh -huh. I want this, I want that. Well, then, go, you know, why did you move here if you want all these things? Huh? You know, I want it to stay as a nice community. And, you know, you drive around, it's not looking so nice sometimes. Everybody's, you know, well, that's not right. So there's one. That was the whole thing. After social media, we moved up to nine members. Uh, and I know we tried to limit members, but I think by having more members on committees, you have an opportunity for more people to do different labor. We certainly have some committees that don't have a member on them, that's for sure. <laughs>